Hi folks, it's review time once again, but before I start the review, just want to mention that I've just surpassed 100 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Hope you're still enjoying the reviews and still more than 80 to go, uh, so stay tuned for at least another probably six months. Uh, so, review time as I mentioned, and we're going to look at a mad release. The game's called Spellbound. Let's load it up. But I just want to mention that this is a follow-up to Finders Keepers, uh, but not considered a sequel. This is actually the start of a trilogy in its own right, known as the Magic Knight Trilogy. And uh, that was originally developed on the Spectrum by David Jones, and this game was actually ported to the Commodore 64 by Richard Darling, so there's some connections to the Darling brothers on this one. This is part of the first style mad packaging, as you can see, with the sort of comic book style artwork on the front there. So we've got uh, the Knight, which is obviously Magic Knight, although it doesn't look anything like the character as you'll soon see. And we've got a guy in the back saying 48 hours and I'm a goner. He looks a bit evil, so I'm not sure why you'd be worried about that. And also we seem to have Thor on there singing If I Had a Hammer. I'm uh, not sure how relevant that is. And on the spine, of course, we've got the logo of the game. And on the back we've got some screenshots. Not the best screenshots to be honest, it's like a menu system there, that one's almost completely obscured by the one in front of it. Uh, that one there doesn't look too bad. Um, this is a port of a Spectrum game as I mentioned, so they're quite monochromatic looking graphics. And a blurb says, you are Magic Knight in the first of a new generation of arcade adventure style games using a unique window menu system. And there's Mr. Tronic on the back there as well. Inside it's familiar stuff with the uh, same sort of style as the other mad releases in this packaging so you've got the introduction to the game with a bit more information about how you play it all command choices can be made by moving a pointing finger to the required choice on a menu uh, your magic knight the hero of finders keepers your tutor gimbal the wizard has been trying out some very old spells to make his rice pudding taste nicer unfortunately the scribes who translated the spells from very ancient english to slightly ancient english made some mistakes with the wording and Gimbal is in trouble. So that must be Gimbal on the front cover then, I guess. Even though he looked like a sinister sort of evil wizard. But there you go. Anyway, we've got the controls. Loading instructions. And inside, we've got uh, foreign language instructions. And this uh, peculiar detective looking chap. Who doesn't really seem to do anything in any of these inlays other than think a lot. Nice loading screen on this one. Very nicely drawn Magic Knight there. Much better than the one on the front cover. And as you can see there it says Spellbound by David Jones and Richard Darling. And you've also got the wizard there who's uh, in trouble based on the instructions. And the Mastertronic added dimension text in the corner there. So nicely done. The title screen then is pretty unspectacular. It says Spellbound a true graphic adventure by David Jones and Richard Darling. Copyright 1986 at the top there. And there's two options, instructions or play the game. So let's have a quick look at the instructions. <clears throat> it plays a little tune and it gives you a bit of background to the game which we've already looked at in the instructions. You press fire and it tells you the controls. And uh, a bit more about the game. This game features Window Mation starring you as Magic Knight with a big list of characters. That music by the way is by Rob Hubbard as is the in-game music. Uh, so let's play the game. So your little magic knight spawns in this room with a moose mounted on the wall. Maybe it's a reindeer, who knows. Anyway, so there's uh, the controls are pretty straightforward. Left and right move your left and right. Up makes you jump and fire activates a menu which there are various commands from we'll get to that later so for example you can go to an object choose pick up an object and then for some reason you have to then say again that you want to pick it up by executing or rejecting the command uh, so pick it up now it says you're now carrying a teleport key and it also says that I'm carrying an advert so um, you go back to the menu and read something and then the advert and again execute command and it's got a little advert there game concept and design by David Jones programmed by Richard Darling 
why not go out and buy our last games called Finders Keepers and Masters of Magic. So a little advert there, otherwise I think that's pretty useless. So let's move along, it's a flick screen adventure, you can obviously see it's influenced or should I say ported from the spectrum uh, by the monochromatic graphics. Uh, so there's various things in here to look at as well. So for example we can examine and you get the choice of an object, a character or yourself. Choose a character and you can see this is Florin the Dwarf. So let's have a look at him. The having to execute a command each time is a bit annoying. Seems a bit over the top given that there's no danger to be done in most of the actions anyway. So it basically just says Florin is asleep. Tells you all about him, strength, happiness, stamina, spell power, food level. So we'll move on. There's a bit of platforming to be done, not a great deal, it's more of an adventure than a platformer. So there's something on top of there, but we'll skip that for the time being. And I've gone into this room here, until somebody switched out the light, you fall and injure yourself fatally on your armour. Why not carry a torch or something similar next time? Hard luck. Uh, and that's game over. Total completion of 3%. You hurt yourself moving around in the dark. Um, so obviously the next game through we need to find something like a torch. So let's give it another try. And let's go right this time. As we know left didn't get me anywhere. Oh well, there's something to pick up. Pick up an object. Red herring. Will it be a red herring though? Who have we got here? Thor. This is Thor. It doesn't look much like the Thor on the front cover. Thor wants his hammer back. Oh, look at that terrible apostrophe there. Total. One of my big bugbears about spelling. Unnecessary apostrophe in once there. Never mind. Let's move on. Oh. I've accidentally pressed fire instead of up to jump there. So here's an object to pick up. Ah, a glowing bottle. That might come in useful. Let's just have a bit of a closer look at that. So this um, examine screen that pops up, window would be a more accurate description of it. Shows you a few things. Tells you how much it weighs. I assume there's a weight limit to what you can carry. Uh, drop status, I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe you shouldn't drop it. Uh, read status means you can read something about it and it's also got magic power, which in this case is zero. So if we then read it, Fizzy pop lemonade with extra added radium will make you the talk of any party. Doesn't seem to be entirely relevant. Let's hope that this is something that will let me get through that room which I couldn't get through without uh, some sort of light. So I'm back at this point, so let's see if I can get through this room. Yes I can. So you just need that glowing bottle for obvious reasons because it glows and lights the room up. So I'm now in a library. I forgot to mention so far that each room has got a name. So you've got the library at the top there, the little bottle and so on. Uh, various objects to pick up here. Let's pick up that. Here. And let's go in the lift. There's something else to pick up there but I'll leave that for the time being. Yes, this is a list, lift because I have been here before. So you can call the lift and it says the lift is here. You walk in the lift and uh, there's a character in there, another one. And that, uh, if we have a look at him, is Samson the Strong. Samson is a little bit stupid. Uh, you can also examine yourself, as you might have noticed there. Which gives you some stats. Strength, happiness, stamina, spell power, food level, progress. Tells you how much game time you've got left and so on. Um, you can also take things from characters, so you go to take object from Samson the Strong, take the elf horn from him for example. Oh my hands are full, right okay so I need to drop something first. Oh I've now picked up the crystal ball, I didn't mean to do that, but it might come in useful. What else have we got there? Let's drop. Let's drop the teleport bug. A 
Okay, so let's now try and take an object from Samson. Take the elf horn. Okay, I've got that now. So let's use the lift. As you can see, as I've picked various things up, you get more options on this menu. So I can now cast a spell, although I don't know which ones to cast at the moment. I can read, I can blow something. Now, that's going to be the elf horn, I assume. Blow the elf horn, you can actually summon somebody. So let's try summoning... Um, Elrand Malfe Elven or something. Halfy Elven. He does not want to be summoned. Okay, fair enough. Let's try just using a lift. So you can move to various levels. Currently on the third floor, as it said on the lift, that was flashing. So let's get up to the roof. So now on the roof, obviously everything that was in the lift has come with me. So if I need that for anything else, it's quite useful. There's something else to be picked up here. I'm just going to dump a bit more stuff in the lift. So I picked up a bottle of liquid, and again, you can read it and examine it and everything. Restorative fluid, 100% proof. That sounds like something that might be quite useful. And there's something else there, but what I'm heading over to is the last screen here. Oh, there's a, there's a person here. Who's this? Lady Rosmore. Lady Rosmore is very clever. Fair enough. Let's see if we can take anything from her. Willow rod or a fast blow fuse. I don't know what I need either of those things for at the moment. Oh, she wants to keep that. Let's try the other thing. She wants to keep that as well. So much for that. Moving on. Uh, so basically, as I'm sure you've already worked out, um, it's one of these games where you've got to play it a lot and work out what to do with the various objects. Uh, I haven't done that yet, I haven't really managed to do that. I've now picked up the Wand of Command, which, if I press fire again, you've now got the option to command a character. There's nobody in the room, so let's go and find somewhere where there is someone in the room and see what we can do. So command the character... Um, you can tell her to be happy. She'll try to be happy. That's nice. Seemingly pointless. Uh, so yeah, basically it's one of these... Oh, game over. I've died of exhaustion. That's a bit annoying. Okay, so I ran out of health. I can't quite work out how you're supposed to get more health at the moment. I've picked up the red herring again, thinking that might be a food item. Uh, so let's have a look and see what it says on the red herring. Now, there's actually some clues here. Two of the most useful objects will start in the roof garden. A certain bottle will be useful if given to Florin and then taken back due to Florin's magical powers. Interesting. Now read the key. Well, I've got a bottle. Shall I try giving this to Fl This is Florin, so let's see if I can give the bottle to him and then take it back. doesn't seem to have done much so maybe it's that bottle that I found on the roof in my last go through and um, yeah that's the most annoying thing so far is I can't actually work out uh, well, how to replenish energy uh, which is limiting my progress somehow this might be the key that it said to read so let's have a look at this uh, the menu um, interface thing is quite clever but a bit on the tedious side let's have a look what this says the man magic talisman can be of much use if you can mend it or get somebody else to mend it. Okay. So there, it does give you some clues at least. Uh, I hadn't realised that until this go, so maybe I'd have got a bit further by now if I'd read the red herring earlier in the game. So let's go back up to the roof. Here I am then back at Florin the Dwarf, so let's give him this bottle and hope it's the right one this time. So give him the bottle of liquid. Okay. Don't see anything obvious change so far, let's just see what's happened with Florin. See if he's woke up. No, he's still asleep. Well, let's try taking it back. OK, 
Okay, don't see anything obvious there. Hmm, bit peculiar. Let's try commanding Florian to wake up. Ah, he's woken up. Maybe now I need to give him this object. Okay, still nothing really obvious going on there. Let's take it back again. Mm, no, still don't know what's going on there. Let's just see if it says anything different on the bottle. Nope, not really. I don't know what the point of that was. I'm getting a bit bored with the game now. I think the problem is that uh, there's lots of puzzles to be solved, but there's nothing very obvious right at the beginning of the game which will give, make you feel like you're making some progress. So let's just go down to one of the lower levels. As you can hear, the music's just restarted. The music's pretty decent. It's a little bit grating. It's not one of Rob Hubbard's best tunes, if I'm honest. So what have we got there? Maybe I can pick that up. Oh, my hands are full. It's a sticky bun though. That sounds like the sort of thing I might be able to eat and replenish my energy. So let's um, drop the key for now. Pick up the sticky bun. Okay. Examine. Yeah, so basically I'm just I'm kind of bored with the game. It's one of those games where you've really got to have a lot of time to keep playing through it, um, and I haven't really got that time. So um, it's quite a nice game, it's got a nice interface, the animation's nice, the graphics are quite cute, um, you know, the characters are quite nicely drawn. There's no obvious power to that sticky bun, so I'll just hold on to that and maybe it'll replenish my energy. Oh, choke, choke, this room is full of deadly nightshade gas, which is fatal to all attempts to learn, master, blah, blah, blah. Basically, I've died again. And that's another bugbear with the game, is basically, you've got no hint that you're gonna die going into that room. The only way you can find that out is by trial and error. Um, and that's quite annoying. So that's gonna be it for the game. Is it worth 2 99 Not to me, personally, it never would have been, because I've never had the patience for these kind of games. But if you're into these kind of adventures, if you're a fan of games like Dizzy, for example, then I'm sure this would have been of some benefit to you. Perhaps, it becomes a little less tricky in the later episodes, maybe the uh, difficulty level was dropped a little bit in Nighttime and Stormbringer, so I'll be reviewing those sometime in the future, but not immediately. Uh, so for now, that's it with this one, and I'm going to say not worth the 2 99 despite being a quite nicely polished game. If you only need the power of the dark side... Two. One. Zero.